Preface of The Story of Ancient Irish Civilization. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Ancient Irish Civilization by P. W. Joyce. Preface by P. W. Joyce, LLD, MRIA, one of the commissioners for the publication of the ancient laws of Ireland, president of the Royal Society of Antiquaries, Ireland. London, Longman's Green and Co. Dublin, M. H. Gill and Son, LTD, 1907. Printed by Ponsby and Gibbs, University Press. Dublin. Preface. This little book has been written and published with the main object of spreading as widely as possible among our people, young and old, a knowledge of the civilization and general social condition of Ireland from the fifth or sixth to twelfth century, when it was wholly governed by native rulers. The publication comes at an appropriate time, when there is an awakening of interest in the Irish language, and an Irish lore of every kind unparalleled in our history. But the book has a further mission. There are many English and many Anglo-Irish people who think, merely from ignorance, that Ireland was a barbarous and half-savage country before the English came among the people and civilized them. This book, so far as it finds its way among the two classes above mentioned, will, I fancy, open their eyes. They will learn from it that the old Irish, so far from being barbarous, were a bright, intellectual, and cultured people that they had professions, trades, and industries pervading the whole population, with clearly defined ranks and grades of society, all working under an elaborate system of native laws, and that, in the steadying and civilizing arts and pursuits of everyday life, they were as well advanced, as orderly, and as regular as any other European people of the same period. They will find, too, that, as regards education, scholarship, and general mental culture, the Irish of those early ages were in advance of all other countries in Europe, that they helped most materially to spread Christianity and to revive learning all over the continent, and that to Irish missionaries and scholars the Anglo-Saxons of the Heptarchy were indebted for the greater part of their Christianity, and for the preservation and restoration of learning when it was threatened with extinction all over England by the ravages of the Danes. But there were, and are, Englishmen better informed about our country. More than three hundred years ago the great English poet Edmund Spencer lived for some time in Ireland, and made himself well acquainted with its history. He knew what it was in past ages, so that in one of his poems he speaks of the time, quote, when Ireland flourished in fame, of wealth and goodness far above the rest, of all that bear the British Isle's name. End of quote. But it is better not to pursue these observations farther here, as it would be only anticipating what will be found in the body of the book. This book is the last of a series of three, of which the second is abridged from the first, and the third from both. The first, A Social History of Ancient Ireland, two volumes, richly gilt, both cover and top, in thirty-one chapters with three hundred sixty-one illustrations, contains a complete survey of the social life and institutions of ancient Ireland. All the important statements in it are proved home by references to authorities, and by quotations from the ancient documents. The second, A Smaller Social History of Ancient Ireland, one volume, cloth, gilt, 598 pages in 27 chapters with 213 illustrations, traverses the same ground as the larger work, but, besides condensation, most of the illustrative quotations and nearly all the references to authorities are omitted. This third book, The Story of Ancient Irish Civilization, gives in simple, plain language an account of the condition of the country in the olden time but as it is here to speak for itself, I need not describe it further. For all the statements it contains, full and satisfactory authorities will be found in the two larger works. I have done my best to make all three readable and interesting, as well as instructive. The ordinary history of our country has been written by many, and the reader has a wide choice. But in the matter of our social history, 
he has no choice at all. For these three books of mine have, for the first and only time, brought within the reach of the general public a knowledge of the whole social life of ancient Ireland. P. W. J. Lyre na Grena. February 1907. End of Preface